right? If there's one thing we all know I love, it's Roblox. And today I've got a really cool one to show you. The Amber B1 7 Access Robot Arm. Right now here in China, there is a lot of progress with robot arms. Prices are dropping and more companies are bringing educational arms and heavier arms like this one that bridge the gap between consumer and professional robots to market. I've been offered a few, but the Ember B1 is the only one so far that I thought I could recommend in good faith, but that comes with some caveats which I'll get into in a minute. First thing you need to know is Ember's payload is 3 kilograms or 6.6 .6 pounds. That does not seem like much, but the arm itself is massive. 8 kilograms or 17 pounds of machined aluminum swinging back and forth. So it's strong, moves fast, and it's got a lot of weight behind it. My camp with these suction cups. Don't even think about it. Not even to just try it out when you unbox it. It needs to be bolted down. First thing, once you do that, you can control it with a Raspberry Pi. The big weak point of all of these new robot arms coming out of China is the control software. We're great at hardware. We're unfortunately not very good at software. So the hardware is great, but you really need to have some programming knowledge if you plan to control them for complex tasks. That said, the software that comes from Amber is better than most so far. Let me show you some of the basics. Okay, the Raspberry Pi is all set up and you will see a file call follow. Before we use, we use the studio, we have to execute this file, execute in terminal. No matter you are using a monitor or uh, an iPad, you have to open this file first. And then we will go into uh, the, uh, the browser and we will Go to your local address and then connect our arm. And if you turn on the power on button, you can control a different access. Okay, now it is home. Let me show you the joint, how I control with the joint space. We can go down and change the speed and make it faster. turning at the end of the tip. Okay, this is a little boring. Uh, let me give you a demo. So in dragging, there are some uh, pre stall files.
All right. Um, in program, you can program a point to point or in a linear light or arc. They're still developing on the arc function. But if you have a file already programmed, you just open it and uh, you can insert any points uh, up or down. It's pretty convenient. This video is made possible by the generous support of JLC PCB, China's largest PCB manufacturer. With JLC, you can have your PCB manufactured in under 24 hours, all while you track the process in real time. Prototype boards start at just $2 in any color. Check the description box for more info. One of the best ways to support me is to support the companies that fund this channel. Now, I don't have a gripper for the end of the arm yet. I'll get something for next time, so today I'm going to be using it to handle a camera. Robotic camera control normally costs a fortune, and Amber is by far the cheapest way to do it. Obviously, someone who knows what they're doing will get cooler shots than I can, but this should give you the idea. Okay, that's uh, so you see TPT 100. It means the speed of how fast to move. I can make it faster if I want. So I'm going to turn it faster, move it faster. You can also run more circle and you can run it continuously. Obviously, I'm just staying out of reach of the arm. If there's one thing I need to emphasize, maybe overemphasize, is that this arm is strong enough to really hurt you if you're in the way and it's going fast. It's not a plastic toy, it's a swinging crowbar. This is probably one of the only machines I've reviewed that I think is strictly adults only. In most settings, I would suggest you put it behind a barrier. If that's a school, that barrier needs to have an interlock on the door to kill all power to the arm if it's open. I know, it seems like I'm being overly cautious, but I have more than one close call learning to use it. Check out this video from yesterday. I was trying to show how strong Amber was with this mannequin head, and I 
didn't notice that Momo had woken up and wandered into the room. Yes, I know I'm a terrible dog mother and I promise to be more careful in the future. Don't worry, Momo was fine, got all the hugs and kisses and wasn't scared at all. But that's a pretty close call and I'm showing you the serious mistake I make so you can learn from it and not repeat it. This is not a small toy robot arm. The next generation of robots that are going to be doing tasks for us won't just be little plastic vacuum cleaners that just get stuck under furniture. There are serious power tools that can move on their own unpredictably. And with real force, a pet or a child, even an adult gets in the way, they are getting hurt. We need to start preparing for that and making the adjustment in our heads from the inconvenience of flight automation malfunctions to being aware of the real danger heavy automation can present as it enters our lives. The arm does support collision control to limit the damage it can do if it hits something, but like many of its functions that has to be done in software and it's not particularly intuitive, again, I can vouch for the build quality and the functionality of the Amber B1 hardware. I'm told the software is being worked on, but I can only reveal what they have, not what they intend to have. If you have used a Raspberry Pi before, can manage a bit of Python or iOS or are just very patient, you'll be fine with the B1 as it is now. If you need a user-friendly consumer GUI, I can tell you that it's their intention, but I would not consider the Amber software to be consumer-ready software yet. That's the software. The build quality on the arm is nuts. All metal, it's got these little cosmetic covers that pop on and off, but those can be 3D printed if you want to replace them. Each servo on the arm has an easy to replace wiring harness running to the next servo. So if there's anywhere or they catch on something, you are looking for some weird proprietary connectors. Those are easy to swap out. If anything, the arm is overbuilt. I can't imagine anyone having any complaints about this hardware for the price. Okay, the Amber B1 is being co-funded on Kickstarter. I'm sure you are aware at this point of all of the issues that come with that. The early bird price of $2,000 is ridiculously cheap for the hardware they are promising. That's about half of what the arm is worth in my opinion. The problem is that Crowdfunded robot arms have probably the worst delivery track record of any crowdfunded projects. And there are some very serious component shortages right now that are really hurting local factories here in China. There's no way of knowing if the components the arms need will all be available. The Amber founders also have no track record on Kickstarter. But it's a lot of robot for a price that you're not going to even get close to elsewhere. So you have to weigh all that in your decision. Okay, that's my initial review of the Amber B1. I will be showing more of its features soon. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. The best thing you can do to help my channel is post links to my videos and tell your friends to follow me. YouTube tends to hide my channel, so that really helps. Sponsorship options are in the description box, but I know times are tough for everyone, so if that's not in, your, in the budget, I understand. Just put in a good work for me when you can, and we're square. That's it for today. Until next time, remember, if I can do it, anyone can do it.